okay so it looks like the numbers have creeped up now so we'll we'll get going now um so hi everyone thank you so much for joining and um, a warm welcome to you all so my name's amy clark i work at site savers um on the ascend western central africa program and my role is the team lead for knowledge innovation and learning so thank you so much for joining this session today so we're just going to share some slides with you all shortly but before we we do that we'll just we're just going to run through a few housekeeping rules with you all which you should all be familiar with after the um after yesterday's session so throughout this session it would be great if you can keep your audio muted just to help keep background noise to a minimum and then when you're speaking please don't forget to unmute and then during the session, we will be doing some group work in breakout rooms. So there's no action required from you as a participant. And MYT are here to magically transport us to the breakout rooms. Then once we're in the breakout rooms, please feel free to turn on your videos as it'd be great to see all your faces. We will also be doing some interactive polling using Mentimeter. So please open your open a new tab in your browser um, to access this, or you can use your mobile phone and busy, visit menti.com. Um, and all you need is the access code, which we will um, provide in the chat. So throughout the session, please feel free to use the chat facility on the virtual um, platform. And we've also now got the chat facility open on Zoom as well for when we go out into the breakout rooms. So if there's any technical difficulties, then MYT are here to help us. Um, and if you have any problems, feel, please feel free to drop MYT an email at admin at nnnevents.com and the MYT team will reply to you immediately. So let's get going. So next slide, please. Great, so this session is entitled Making the Most of Evidence and Learning in NTDs, Defining a Knowledge Management Approach for the NNN. So to start with, I will just outline the content of the session. So I will start off uh, with an introduction to knowledge management and the NNN task team. And then my team members, who I'll introduce to you very shortly, will share findings from a recently conducted survey that we've done of the NNN membership on knowledge management. You will all then have the opportunity to help shape the work of the task team by inputting into some knowledge management principles and then participating in a group work activity which relates to the WASH working group and we'll be using the fun retro tool for this and then we'll do a final wrap up and close out and talk through next steps. So before we get going, we just want to start with an icebreaker question. So if you can all please go to menti.com, and I think Laura, you're going to post this in the, in the chat with the code. And we want to start with a question, which hopefully all of us have in common. So the question is, what is knowledge? And you should see four options listed so please just select one of those options which you think is the correct answer and then we will shortly so just a few seconds to do that and if there's any issues please flag in the chat box Great, so next slide. So next, all of the speakers will now introduce themselves. So as I've mentioned, my name is Amy Clark and I work on the Ascend West program. So I'm based in the UK. So in my role, I oversee the program's innovation fund, which we'll be talking about at the innovation session tomorrow. So it's a bit of a shameless plug there, um, as well as I have a focus on program learning. So the other team members, will now introduce themselves. So over to you, Katie. 
Hello, my name is Katie Fantaguzzi, um, and I am a senior MER advisor focusing on operational excellence at the Schistosomiasis Control Initiative Foundation. And over to you, Sarity. Hi everyone, it's Sarity Dodson here. Um, I'm from the Freda Hollows Foundation. I'm the Director of Research, so I oversee our uh, research portfolio and I'm based, based in Melbourne, Australia. Lovely to be with you today. Great, then over to you, Laura. Hi, I'm Laura Ulanowski and I'm a Senior Communications Officer focusing on NTDs at Sightsavers. Great, and then Ruiz. Hi everyone, my name is Rose Kurtjes. I work as an information officer and I coordinate the Info NTD platform. Uh, I'm based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Great, thanks everybody. So as this map illustrates, you can see where we're all located. Um, and being located across three continents has made arranging phone calls in our task team a lot of fun over the last few months with all the different time zones. Um, so to make this even more fun, we'd love to seek some new NNN members to join our task team. So we're really looking for people um, that can help fill some gaps in this map and look for some more representation from endemic countries in particular. So as we go through today and you hear about the work of, of the task team, please keep this request in mind and we can then share uh, contact details at the end of the session. So now if we just switch back to the Menti and then we can see the results from that first question that we asked on what is knowledge. Great, so thanks for all your responses here. So we can reveal that the correct answer is number three, which the majority of you have all got correct, which is awesome. So we're all on the same page. So we've asked this question in particular because often information and knowledge are used interchangeably when it comes to knowledge management. So it's important to distinguish between the two. Um, and the other responses that we had up here, so number one, facts, facts and statistics is um, a definition for data. And then number two, facts provided or learned about um, is information. And then number three, the quality of having experienced knowledge and good judgment is wisdom. So often in knowledge management, you'll look at each of these components, data, information, knowledge and wisdom to work out how to organise knowledge within your organisation. So for now, this is purely just an illustrative exercise um, as we recognise knowledge is far more complex than this. But this is just to get us into the mindset of, of knowledge management. So we'll return to the mentee shortly. And um, if you could just switch back to the slides. So then to touch on what is knowledge management. So it can be defined in fairly simple terms. There's lots of definitions out there, um, but we particularly like this one from Davenport as it's fairly straightforward. So it can be defined as the process of capturing distributing and effectively using knowledge. So as the knowledge management task team, we are currently going through a process to come up with our own definition, which the NNN can then adopt to make it meaningful for the NTD context. So knowledge management is not just about storing documents or a system or a technology, but it's, it's much more of a life cycle that involves various components, which you can see on this slide are mapped out on this graphic. So for example, as with NTDs, it is all about people and thinking about who holds the NTD knowledge, how does it get transferred and applied in a way that is inclusive and collaborative. So the term, knowledge management originated in the 90s so from the management consultancy world and over time it kind of has shifted its focus so with the rise of the internet originally it was more focused on information management but now it's become a bit more person-centered so let's go back to the mentimeter poll we've, we've got a few more questions to ask you here so if you go back to the Mentimeter and then the code 
is the same as what you used before. And the next question that we want to ask you is what is the name that's given to internal knowledge, such as the internal knowledge you may have on how to ride a bicycle? So we'll give you a few seconds to answer that question. And then if Sarah, if you can switch to the, the Mentimeter poll, we can see the results. So we'll give you a bit of time to respond to this question. You can see them coming in now. Great, I give 10 more seconds. Great, okay, so again, looks like we've got the correct answer here from the majority of responses. So the answer is tacit knowledge. And we'll talk about that in a bit more detail on the next slides. So we've got one more question for you. So what is the, um, the next question, if you can go to, oh, sorry, Sarity, on the Mentimeter, can you go to the next question? <laughs> Great, thank you. So then the next question for you all is what term describes knowledge that is written down? So this can be in books, reports, or graphs. So we'll give you a few seconds to respond here. And we put in a few options here, a few curve balls to try and throw you off the course. Great, I'll give you a few more seconds to send in the final responses. Okay, looks like it's pretty close with number two and three. So I can reveal the correct answer here is explicit knowledge. So we'll just loop back to the slides and follow up on this. So often in, in knowledge management, you talk about various types of knowledge. <clears throat> so at the tip of the iceberg here, we've got explicit knowledge. So this can be more objective because it can be measured and documented um, and you can kind of physically see it. Whereas below the waterline on this iceberg is tacit knowledge. So this is much more kind of difficult to formulize as it's often kind of unwritten knowledge that may reside in people's heads and commonly referred to as know-how. So we just want to illustrate this as, a, as an example and just think about all of the, the tacit knowledge that the NNN membership holds. So if the worst case scenario happened and we were to lose a lot of our NNN members, um, then the NNN community would be at risk of losing an extensive amount of tacit knowledge. And that kind of brings me on to the, the next slide of why we think that knowledge management is important to the NNN. So we think a focus on knowledge management is important because there's a real opportunity here to strengthen the NNN as a platform for knowledge exchange um, and trying to convert some of that tacit knowledge to explicit knowledge. So we recognize this is already part of the NNN's mission. Um, and we also recognize that the NNN's ability to effectively engage and advance NTD control and elimination goals depends on members' expertise and experience of implementing NTD programs in endemic countries. So we really want to kind of harness this and utilize this. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the phrase, knowledge is power, but it's equally true that sharing what we know greatly increases the power of the NNM platform. So secondly, 
we feel that a focus on knowledge management could help enhance collaboration. So knowledge can frequently be undocumented, difficult to access and at risk of disappearing. So we think that the membership and the working groups can take advantage of, of what other parts of the platform are already doing and what they already know. Um, and a focus on knowledge management can help facilitate access to opinions and experience of different people to promote cross fertilization of ideas. And this would really help to strengthen our capacity to feed evidence and messages into our joint advocacy efforts. And thirdly, about, it's about promoting efficiencies and standardizing processes. So by encouraging more documented and shared process, it's easy to make sure that everyone is on the same page and to avoid reinventing the wheel. So all in all, we feel that this would help amplify the influence and impact of the NNN network and contributing to achieving the goals that are set out in the WHO 2030 roadmap. So as we heard on day one, the roadmap is our blueprint and fundamental shifts are required, which will be achieved through collective action. So key to this is effective knowledge management and exchange within and between our stakeholder groups. So next slide. So what are we doing about this? So in response, we have formed this knowledge management task team. And this, uh, we developed in terms of reference, and this was approved by the NNN Exco <clears throat> earlier on this year. So the purpose of our task team is to explore and define an approach to knowledge management for the NNN. And we recognize the NNN is a really vibrant and diverse platform for knowledge exchange. Um, and we want to make sure that, that the approach that we adopt is, is flexible, user driven, and then obviously it also needs to be balanced with um, resource constraints as well. So as a team, what we are going to be working on will be producing a report, so number one on this slide, and this will outline the strengths and challenges that relate to knowledge management across the NNN. Um, and then it will include feedback from number two here, which represents a survey which we've conducted of the NNN membership. And we have a link to this survey later on in the slides and also can share findings from this survey. And then we're also going to be doing a bit of an analysis of existing knowledge products um, that are already out there on the NNN platform um, and a literature scan. And then we want this all to then feed in to a knowledge management kind of best practice briefing or guidance, which we hope will be then useful for the NNN working groups. And the idea here is to try and create a bit of standardization around the types of knowledge products that get produced um, and the group work tasks that we'll do today will feed into this best practice guidance. So that's all from me for the introduction section. So I'll now hand over to Katie, who's going to run through the results from the survey. So over to you, Katie. Thanks so much, Amy. It was a great framing of the, the task team. Um, so again, my name is Katie Fantaguzzi and I'm with the Schistosomiasis Control Initiative Foundation and I'm going to talk a little bit about the survey results. Um, if we go to the next slide, Sari. Um, so as a starting point for the task team, we wanted to have a better understanding about how member organizations are using knowledge management, both internally and externally. And um, by internally, I mean within their organizations and externally how knowledge is being shared between different stakeholders. And so as an approach to this, we did an online survey in July and the survey was sent to the NNN membership. Um, and so I'm going to talk about the preliminary results from that survey. Um, by the end of this 15 minutes that we'll be talking about the survey, um, hopefully you'll have a better understanding of where we are as a community and you'll also have some ideas about how we can move forward together. So we had 26 initial respondents and if you look at the left, um, left donut, you'll see that the area of focus were concentrated on programming, management, and research. If you look at the right-hand side, you'll see that 42% of the respondents were from the US, another 12% were from the UK, 4% were from France. And so we had a bit of a skew towards high-income countries. 
and we're hoping to broaden this out with additional representation across the globe. We also had uh, quite a few respondents who, 77% in fact, so three out of four respondents who are participating in NNN groups. So those would be things like disease groups or cross-cutting groups, a task team or the executive committee. Um, and so we also wanted to solicit some opinion from the general NNN membership as well. Um, that being said, we do feel like we had good coverage of organizations. Uh, you can see here from the, the logo slide that we did have quite a few organizations that participated. And of course, the participants weren't answering directly on behalf of their organization. They were sharing their own personal viewpoints. But it still is important to see that there was a spread of perspectives. So I think one of the key findings that we got initially was that more than 50% of the participating organizations reported that they don't have specific resources dedicated to knowledge management. And by resources, that means that they don't have a specific department or a team or individuals within their organization who have knowledge management as one of their specific key responsibilities. Um, and that may be because there is they're smaller organizations, and so they don't have the resources to dedicate specifically to knowledge management. Um, but it does indicate that maybe there is some, some juice to be squeezed from knowledge management within the NNN community. Um, there's potentially limited capacity to really capitalize on knowledge management across the board. So we wanted to dig into this a little bit further and we asked what specifically organizations are doing with regards to knowledge management. And we kind of spread this out on a spectrum. There were some organizations who were doing very little, they had less of an intense focus on knowledge management and others who had very robust approaches. And on the lower end of the spectrum, one of the participants reported that there was nothing specific that was done, that all of knowledge management was a bit informal and ad hoc. Um, kind of a, a middle of the road approach was a uh, participant reported that they do regular updates and they have some forum for sharing knowledge. But on the higher end of the, the intensity spectrum, there were organizations, one who reported having a, a community of practice approach where a group would get together and collaborate to tackle a problem jointly. Um, and then our favorite response was that one organization said that they spend half a million dollars annually on specific knowledge management tasks. Um, and so as you can see, there's a wide variety of how knowledge management is approached. Another thing that we wanted to understand as a task team was what kinds of information specifically are used on a regular basis. And so we asked participants um, from a list of different knowledge products or different types of information, what they used regularly on, for, to do their job. And so what you see are the percentage of respondents who report using X type of information for their job. And the most important type of information was epidemiological program data. Um, published research was also very important. But you can see that this all hovers, uh, most of these types of information, over 50% of respondents are using it routinely. And so what we get is a picture that a lot of information is required as a community to do our jobs effectively. Um, and so that would point to the importance of having a robust knowledge management platform because this is a data hungry enterprise that we're jointly engaged in. And so we, we need that information to be available and accessible um, and ready for us to, to use in our decision making. Um, it's just also important to note that the type of information you use is going to most likely be related to the job role that you have, but nonetheless, you can see that there is quite a bit of information that's required. And we, the, the types of information shown in orange are the, the information that if we had to have some criteria for prioritizing what information should be shared, perhaps that's where we would draw a, sort of an arbitrary line for prioritizing that information for sharing. We also wanted to understand where individuals and organizations are going to get that information. 
And so we defined this by level of accessibility. So we asked people, where do you go for information? And so again, you'll see the, the number of respondents, the percentage of respondents who report using a specific source or channel to get information. And we define the accessibility of that channel as low, meaning um, an independent consultant or a member of the general public probably wouldn't be able to get access to it. Um, and high means it's, pro it's publicly available or it would be very easy for somebody to, to get obtain it. And so the most important channel that participants reported was the internal sources within their organization. Uh, journals and publications were also very important, but of course those sometimes have high costs to them. So they're not always easily accessible to all. So we wanted to understand what are these barriers and facilitators to getting information more readily. We wanted to consider the ease of those channels, how costly they are, what the quality is, how timely is information being reported, and the credibility of those sources. And so what we would want to do, an aspiration that we have as a task team, is to make this a little bit greener, to have more greens on this list rather than yellows and reds. We also wanted to have some understanding of how people trust different sources or different uh, channels and avenues for getting information, which is important because we want to have a clear understanding of, of how to engage in this work. And so we asked individuals to, to just give us some comments about their trust in different sources and different information. And so some key themes emerged. You can see that trust is one, uh, peer reviewed, having some validity in the, the information that's presented. There was, of course, a premium placed on peer-reviewed publications and expert opinions. But another thing that, that came through in the survey is that people value uh, the reputation of organizations. And so they reported that the source of the information, the reputation of the organization that produced some information was even more important than the reputation of where they got it. So for instance, um, let's say there was a WHO guidance. If it was produced by the WHO, that's more important than where they came across that WHO guidance. So that helps us understand how information currently flows, how people triage it, how they rate it, and how it's used. So what we're up to now is look at how individuals and organizations are using their information and sources and knowledge management. But as a task team, what we wanted to understand is what is the unique role of the NNN in this landscape? How does the NNN engage? And so we asked participants some questions. We asked it in two different ways from two perspectives. So if you look over on the left-hand side, you can see that there are some different activities that the NNN is engaged in. The first one, for example, is advocating to address needs and gaps. And so we asked participants, how effectively and consistently do you think the NNN is currently doing this? And you can see um, on the, the lighter bluish green color, those are people who strongly agree with that statement that the NNN is indeed doing this activity consistently and effectively. Um, the lighter blue is those who agree and then so on and so forth. And so what we see is that about 80% of respondents felt that the NNN is doing this, advocating to address needs and gaps. They're doing it well. And then we asked them how they felt that the NNN was positioned to do this activity. And that's what you see on the right-hand side. And again, more than 80, I think about 85% of participants felt that the NNN was well-placed to do this activity. And so this gave us a picture of what the NNN is currently doing it, in regards to knowledge management and how uniquely positioned it is to carry that forward. And I think that that tells us that there is a role for the NNN in facilitating knowledge management for the NTD community. And that that is uh, specific to the NNN, that an individual organization wouldn't be able to facilitate this knowledge in the same way. So in summary, uh, we found that 
over 50% of organizations don't have dedicated resources to knowledge management. And um, of course that can be related to the size of the organization, but what that indicates to us is that there is potential for doing more across the board as an NTD community to have uh, more fluid knowledge management. In addition, the, the groups that do have some knowledge management activities in place, there's a wide variability in how that is done, both in terms of the resources invested and the intensity of focus. Another key takeaway is that there's a wide range of information types and sources that are used across the community um, on a regular basis. And that means that this is data intensive work that we do. Um, and there's a lot to be gained from having a unified approach and to having fewer barriers to the transfer and uptake of knowledge. There are only a few information sources that were available and accessible to all. Um, and so we would like to find ways to make that less, have fewer obstacles overall. We also found that the majority of survey participants felt that the NNN is doing a good job addressing knowledge management needs, but there are opportunities to further improve that. Um, as we said, we had 26 initial participants, but we'd like to hear from more people. And so the link to the survey, if you'd like to participate, is below, because as we take the task team forward, we want to ensure that we're being as inclusive as possible of all uh, viewpoints. So we'd appreciate if you would participate in that. Um, but as we're talking about taking the task team forward, it's always helpful to have a shared understanding of knowledge management. And so we wanted to work together to, to come up with some principles to guide us as we move forward. I'll pass along to Sarity. Wonderful, thanks, Katie. Um, hi, everyone, it's lovely to be with you. Um, I'm going to speak to you just briefly about um, some knowledge management principles that we're hoping to develop and why, uh, and then we're really keen to, to get your input. Um, so as Amy mentioned, the, the task team has been set up to, to undertake a few activities and to uh, generate, um, a report that will put forward to the executive committee some, some recommendations around how the knowledge management practices of the NNN might be strengthened into the future because we do believe that there's perhaps a unique opportunity of the platform um, to really acknowledge the expertise that sits across the member organisations. Um, and one of the components of the uh, report that we would uh, like to include is a set of principles, uh, some knowledge management principles. Um, and we, we think this is really valuable and important to do because whilst we might produce some best practice guidance and, and some specific recommendations, um, having some agreed sets of principles can really be an enduring um, you know, asset uh, that, that can support knowledge management. So principles help to um, help us to navigate grey areas. They help us to, um, they provide some guideposts and signposts along the way. They distill the collective wisdom of, of the network um, and they can be enduring beyond a set of um, particular guidance or recommendations. So the way that we're defining uh, principles is that, you know, principle is a, a proposition or a value that helps to, to guide our behaviour or evaluation or our practice. Um, and rather than the task team coming up with our own ideas about what these principles should be, uh, we'd really love to leverage the expertise in, in the room today to, to support us to, to do this. So we're going to have a, a, a bit of a breakout session, a bit of an activity, and we're going to use Fun Retro for, for this activity. So let me just... Um, give you a bit of a snapshot of what we're going to do. And Laura is going to pop into the chat box a link to this fun retro board. So if Laura, if you could pop that link in the board and if um, everybody could click on that link, follow that to the fun retro board, what you will see is something like uh, this uh, picture that you see on the screen now, you'll see that there's a number of cards, green cards. Each of those cards set out a draft principle that we have come up with as a task team. And we would love to get your input into, into those. So you will see on the, the 
uh, right bottom of each of the cards, uh, a little thumbs up symbol and a little comment box. So we would like you to um, click the thumbs up button to indicate your support for that principle. Uh, and if you have any suggestions or comments or questions about any of the principles that we have drafted, if you could use the comment um, function to, to, to note those. You'll also notice at the top that there is a, a card that allows you to add some, um, in, the, in the comment section, add some principles if you think that we perhaps have missed something really critical. Um, so I'll give you about eight minutes um, to undertake this activity and I'll set the timer. But please go ahead and enter away. Someone has let us know that the comment section isn't working, so I'm just going to enable that. You should be able to, to use the comment fu function now.
I think everybody has cast their votes now. So we might cross back um, now to the slides and I'm going to hand over now to, to Laura. Okay, fantastic. Thanks very much, Sarati. And um, yeah, so first of all, um, I've got a few extra um, housekeeping um, updates to give you um, before we commence on our neglected tropical journey. Um, so, okay, are you all ready? Well, um, during the session, we'll be doing some group work in breakout rooms. And when it's time, you'll automatically be moved into a breakout group by one of the NYT needs. NYT team, uh, no actions needed from you. Uh, once you're in the breakout room, please turn on your video using the button on the left hand corner. You can also unmute yourself um, to speak and participate. Um, kindly mute yourself to, again after you've spoken and to avoid any background noise. And once the group work is complete, we'll return automatically to the main room after a 60 second warning. Please take note of your facilitator's name when you move into your breakout group. Um, but if you get disconnected at any point, we can use this information to add you back into the correct breakout room. And we ask you to then switch your video and your audio off when you return to the main room. So housekeeping over. Um, we're about to get going on our neglected tropical journey. And the goal of our journey is to plan the design, production and dissemination of a key guidance document, which is the WASH behaviour change guidance. Some of you may be aware that the NNN WASH task group have already put some work into preparing a guidance to enhance the impact of behaviour change communications. The WASH task group are keen to hear from you what considerations they should be taking when planning this document to make sure that their work is used. We'll be sharing your chosen journeys with the WASH team after this session. But of course, this process is also useful to adapt for any knowledge product you plan to generate in the future. We're about to split into four breakout teams and each team will map their own journeys towards the goal. We'll then come back together to share our experiences. Each team will have a knowledgeable tour guide to support you through the journey. And MYT will now transport you all by the click of a button to the neglected tropical journey start. And you'll have 25 minutes to reach the end. Over to MYT. Opening the rooms now. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, some of you should be coming back from the breakout rooms. Welcome back to the main, main room. You'll be joined by your host shortly. People are starting to come back. Welcome back. We've got 10 participants so far. Coming back. Right, thanks, Ros. May take a few minutes just to. We now have 55 back. Brilliant. Okay, welcome back, everyone. 
Um, I'm sure we're all really keen to hear about how everyone else's journeys went. And uh, luckily, we've got some volunteers, um, one from each team, to share with us uh, a few key points from what they found most interesting about their sessions. Um, is Ashley there? Would you be able to tell us your main observations, Ashley? Um, yeah, sorry, just fiddling with my screen for a bit. So in our team, we spent a lot of time discussing, so we didn't really have that much time to vote in the end, but I thought one topic that was brought up that was quite interesting was uh, under a second column on background research on how will data evidence be evaluated and how will we safeguard against bias and another point was how will contradictory evidence be handled so just informing that uh, preliminary knowledge base really and thinking about the different biases and contradictions that might exist Really, really interesting. Thank you very much, Ashley. Um, and is, is Amber there? Amber, would you be able to give us uh, yeah. your thoughts from your group? Yeah, so we, Ashley and I were actually in the same group, but I can kind of build on what Ashley said. Um, what was nice to see, I think, in each of the kind of steps of the knowledge management process was that accessibility and access to the knowledge was um, kind of a, a massive theme. So, is, you know, how do we make it um, free for all, but what's the right channel, what's the right way to publish information that people will be able to actually access it? Um, and how is that feedback loop also kind of worked in as well? How often is feedback taken in and how is it taken in from, from the people that are actually using um, the data? So I think that was really good to see that the overall kind of considerations took into account a lot of um, what the audience and, and the it was very user centered, which is nice to see. Brilliant, thank you very much, Amber. And Anna Julia, are you there and you able to feedback from your group? Sure, um, yeah, building on the user centric side is to talk a little bit about the scoping. I think it was indicated really up front that it's important to think about the purpose of the guidance document and who's the intended user. Um, and I thought the other really um, valuable point was really thinking up front who are the key partners and stakeholders that might be useful to engage right from the start um, to make it a, a success. Um, and then later in the publish um, part, also thinking about a communications plan to make it make it very clear sort of who are the right advocates and champions later on to improve the uptake. So there was a nice sort of story as you went through in terms of who are the right partners, which I thought was great. Fantastic. I can com completely agree with the, the early engagement. It can make such a, good, a difference. Um, brilliant. Thank you, Anne Julia. Um, Amy, do you, do you, are you able to feed back from your group or was there someone else in your group already feeding back? Thanks, Laura. Yeah, Anna Julia was actually in my group. So, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. All right. Um, so, I think that's, that's all of the different groups that have fed back. Um, I, I found that a really interesting exercise. So, thank you so much for, for participating, everyone. And um, if you have any comments or, or feedback, do drop it into the chat. And at this point, I think we will move on to uh, Sarity. unmuting myself thanks thanks everybody thanks for all those contributions um, I think that's really going to be valuable inputs both for the work of the knowledge management task team and um, particularly the results of that activity just now um, that will certainly help with the work that the uh, wash working group are engaged in at the moment so thanks um, very much for your participation in that um, I'm just going to um, close off the session and, and wrap up and, and talk a little bit about next steps um, and, and how you might get engaged um, from here. So um, as we discussed a little earlier in the session, um, the knowledge management task team are focused on a couple of key activities at the moment. Um, we are you know, hoping to support the NNN um, executive committee, uh, have 
you know, have a deeper understanding of the knowledge management strengths and opportunities for improvement um, of the NNN um, and to, to generate a set of recommenda recommendations some actions for improving the knowledge management capabilities um, of the NNN. Um, there is a you know, significant opportunity to, to leverage all of the expertise that exists across all of the NNN member organisations and we uh, would really love to, to harness that. Um, and we're also hoping to move towards producing some NNN um, knowledge management best practice briefings or some guidance that particularly the, the working groups might use as they undertake the, their work and they produce knowledge products and, and aim to share those with the NNN membership. Um, so we are working towards producing a, a report that will encapsulate some of these findings and, and some of these recommendations. Um, and as we mentioned, we've, we've undertaken this survey and, and this activity today is, is also part of um, the exercise of generating uh, some of those, those inputs. So we're interested in your thoughts um, about the work that we're doing, um, anything that you think that the knowledge management task team should be focused on, should be prioritising, um, your any questions that you have of, of us and the work that we're undertaking. Um, we've provided you with a little bit of a snapshot into our work today, um, but we're very happy to, to engage with you one-on-one -on -one or as a group and, and um, delve in a little deeper to, to what we're doing. So we just welcome you to use the, the chat function um, and add any suggestions or questions or comments that, that you have. Uh, we may not have um, a massive amount of time to cover all of your questions, but we probably do have a little bit of time if you've got some questions that we can, we can field. Um, so please go ahead and Laura, if you could let me know if, if people are adding anything into the chat box that we can respond to. Um, and just a reminder as well, so uh, Katie talked you through some of the preliminary findings of the survey that we've conducted. Uh, as she noted, we've got um, responses from 26 uh, respondents from across a broad range of organisations, um, but most of them were from high income um, country respondents and we would really love to hear from um, those that are working within endemic countries and really understand what some of the needs that they have in relation to accessing and using knowledge and how we can ensure that um, the NNN's approach to knowledge management really uh, is, is responsive to, to the needs of those that are working within endemic countries. So we'd really value your inputs. Um, the survey takes about 10 minutes to complete. Um, and Laura, if you wouldn't mind popping that link to the survey into the chat box so people can, can perhaps visit that immediately after the session or when you, when you have a moment, we'd really value um, your inputs into that. And that will certainly help us with our um, reporting back to the executive committee. Um, and then just a final word on how you can get involved. Uh, if you're interested in joining the task team, as Amy said, um, we have a great little group and um, we're meeting regularly to progress the objectives that we set, but we would love some additional members. We'd, we'd um, particularly love some members from um, some other countries that perhaps are not rep represented at this stage in the group. And we welcome the challenge of finding a, a time zone that, that um, means that we can all meet. Um, now you might be interested in the work of the knowledge management task team or interested in knowledge management generally, but perhaps don't have the time to commit to joining the task team. That's okay too. If you'd like to get in touch with us and just uh, let us know that you're, you have an interest and that you'd like to stay informed about what we're doing. Um, then we can pop you on a list and, and make sure that we're um, providing you with some, some regular updates. Um, so Amy and I are the best point of contact. If you'd like to get in, you can either reach out to us via email and you'll see our email addresses on the screen. Um, you can also reach us via the NNN conference platform. Um, please reach out during the, during the conference if you've got any questions or you want to have a chat. Uh, we'd be really happy to, to, to make a time with you. Just to the final bit of thanks to NNN sponsors. We appreciate it. We've um, we enjoy getting together uh, with 
with our colleagues across NNN member organisations. Um, it's been lovely to have you in the workshop today. And um, we look forward to working with you in the coming years to strengthen the knowledge management uh, practices of the NNN. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Great session. Thank you. Bye.